Probably the Shining's most famously frightening scene is the tricycle scene, showcasing Danny's vision of the twin girls. Kubrick sets us up psychologically for this scare by showing the twins in advance during Danny's bathroom vision, the games room scene, and when Danny tries to enter the locked room 237. But there's a lot more to it than that. For example, in this scene from the US cut of the film, we see a framed picture of two children in blue, planting a seed in the viewer's mind. A couple of minutes later in the scene, we get a direct verbal reference to the dead twins. Yeah, he seems absolutely fine now, but you should have seen him. <laughs> no. Kids can scare you to death. Forever. And ever. And ever. Going with the ghost story narrative of the film, we are allowed to assume that these are the daughters of Delbert Grady, being that they appear to have been killed with an axe. We're given an outline of this by Stuart Ullman. During the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and uh, <laughs> killed his family with an axe. But there's an important mismatch between Ullman's explanation and the vision of the twins itself. The ages he gives. And he came up here with his wife and two little girls, I think about eight and ten. There's no way that Ullman would assume these identical girls to be two years apart. They are definitely twins. Kubrick even cast a pair of real twins, Louise and Lisa Burns, in the roles. Now here's an odd detail in the making of the Shining documentary. Jack Nicholson is introduced to James Mason on set. Mason played the sexual predator Humbert Humbert in Kubrick's earlier film Lolita. Kubrick, who had been informed that James Mason was in England at the time of shooting, invited Mason and his guests on set while Kubrick's daughter filmed the proceedings. Nicholson is introduced to what we can assume to be James Mason's friends and relatives. And who do we find among them? Two little girls about eight and ten, who are introduced as Katie and Liza. And this is all our gang. And Katie and Liza. They're so excited. And Mr. and Mrs. Piggott. Katie, the older of the two, is strikingly similar facially to the twin girls of the film. We get a very good look at her because she glances straight into the camera. Her younger sister, Liza, doesn't look anything like the twins. However, her sky blue dress is almost identical. How can this be? Was this whole making of scene scripted, with actors stepping in to symbolically play out roles relating to the subliminal narrative of The Shining? Probably not. A much more believable theory is that this visit to The Shining set by Mason and friends occurred before any of the twin girl scenes were shot. And incidentally, the tricycle encounter with the twins was not in the novel. Kubrick most likely observed these two little girls about eight and ten and then based the twin girls' costumes and appearance upon Katie's face and hair and Liza's dress. If this was the case, then it's likely that James Mason was being cast, against his knowledge, as Delbert Grady. Another aspect of the twin scene that's quite interesting is that rather than the girls being two people, there are several visual hints that they are just one person. As well as wearing the same clothes, they speak in a single unified voice and are seen in carefully aligned symmetrical shots, as if the screen is vertically mirrored down the center. Even their blood-stained corpses are mirrored. One twin is face down and the other is face up, with their heads and feet on opposite sides of the screen and the limbs arranged identically. It's as if during the process of being murdered, their torsos have been spun along the center axis of the screen. The set design isn't precisely mirrored along the centre axis because there's a connecting hallway to the left, but directly to the right of the hallway is a door with an exit sign above. A little later in this video, this exit sign will become thematically important. Kubrick also communicates the mirror symbology of the twins by associating them with other symmetrical compositions through simple editing. Shots of the twins are flashed on screen next to the shots of the twin elevators and room 237 twin doors. The rest of the doors in these surrounding halls are single doors. 
The doors are also polished and reflective, like mirrors. When Danny turns the locked handle, he is facing the polished double surface, and so is facing his own reflection, and from our point of view, he appears to be holding hands for a moment with his own reflection. It's at this point that we cut to a shot of the twins, his own double reflection. He also saw the twins in his first shining vision while looking into a mirror. So on one level the twins seem to represent Danny himself, perhaps accompanied by his imaginary friend Tony. Rather than seeing the past, he is anticipating his own potential murder by his father. Another supporting detail is that in all three tricycle scenes he wears red and sky blue clothing, just as the dead twins wear light blue dresses and are smeared in red blood. And then there's the blue seat of the tricycle, which against Danny's back gives him the appearance of wearing a blue dress. The twins also appear to represent Danny's anticipation of his own mother being murdered. They have jet black hair like Wendy and they wear blue dresses. Wendy wears a blue dress at the start of the film with red stockings and sleeves, which gives her the symbolic appearance of an axe-murdered twin. When wandering the maze with Danny holding her hand, she is again wearing red and blue. As Danny steps into the open doorway of room 237, he is approaching a set of angled mirrors that are about to show him a double reflection of himself. But he also shouts into the mirrors, Possibly a double meaning, as in asking if she is in the mirror as Danny's twin. The slightly ajar doors and mirrors of the room 237 entrance were also paralleled when Danny encountered the twins. A large cupboard right screen had its doors slightly ajar. There are many other scenes that reveal the mysterious twins as symbolising Danny and Wendy in the future rather than Grady's daughters in the past. He and his mother hold hands like the twins as Halloran walks them through the kitchen. While exploring the maze they again hold hands, a simple parallel of the twins walking in and out of the games room trying to find their way out of the overlook. Danny also sits mirroring Mr Halloran in their private conversation and the two of them held hands when walking off to get ice cream. Immediately after Danny sees the twins in the games room, we cut to a shot of Ullman, Jack and Wendy in the hallway near the Torrance apartment. Its background wallpaper is the same as that when we see the dead twins. And the next time we see Danny, he is walking about holding hands with Ullman's secretary, Susie. The games room is another multifaceted twins scene. The twins turn their heads in mirrored fashion and smirk at each other. This time the set is not symmetrical, but the twins are positioned centre screen in a doorway, just as they were flashed on screen when Danny faced the room 237 doorway. Also in the games room, notice the strange use of a Monarch Mountain Ski Resort poster. The skier is a silhouetted figure with the sun blazing over his shoulder. Perhaps Kubrick chose this to suggest a shiny knife in the hand of a dark figure in a stabbing gesture, just like he showed Danny in the kitchen with knives pointing down at his head in two shots. And here's a little continuity error to mess with your head. If we compare the four separate shots of the dead twins by flicking back and forth between them, we find that they're not actually identical shots. Their stomachs move, they are breathing. That parallels nicely with Danny's petrified breathing. Creepier. Now before you say out loud, oh come on, you're overanalyzing there, consider this. A similar motif occurred in Kubrick's next film, Full Metal Jacket, in which a dead NVA soldier subtly moves between shots. That's just different takes, right? Well, read the graffiti written on a helmet in the lower right. It says, Boo! A ghost motif. And a similar motif was used in this shot. Pay attention to the ghost-like bandaged faced soldier who passes the camera and listen to the music that coincides with him waving to us. Back 
Back to the twins, another noteworthy detail is that the location of the Dead Twins Hall is very close to the Torrance apartment. Its orientation can be decoded by comparing it to two other shots. Ullman walking the Torrances down a blue hall to view their apartment, and Wendy pushing the breakfast tray out of an elevator near the Torrance apartment. The most distant walls in these shots feature the flowery white wallpaper seen in the Dead Twins scene. But all of the other walls feature a simple sky blue colour, which is incidentally almost identical to the colour of the twins' dresses. The L shape of the hallway that wraps around this location is where Danny's tricycle encounter with the twins occurred. Confirmation of this hallway arrangement can be seen left screen in the shot of the dead twins. The wallpaper in the hall from which the chair was toppled is sky blue, like the wallpaper outside the Torrance apartment. And in the wider shots of the twins, we see an exit sign directly above a door on the right wall. This same sign is visible in the background as Wendy wheels the breakfast tray out of the elevator. Danny is riding in anti-clockwise circles outside the Torrance apartment. Hence he will be playing with twins forever and ever as he cycles around this unending hallway. The camera shot steadily moving closer to the twins could also be suggesting the continuous movement of Danny's tricycle, forever stuck in a loop and unable to escape the horrifying vision. This looped hallway motif may even explain why Kubrick used a wallpaper design that shows flowers arranged to look slightly like question marks. Is he teasing us to pay attention to the layout of the halls? At the end of the film, Danny almost loops back upon his own tracks in the maze, but breaks the pattern by turning right. If he hadn't done this, he would have encountered his crazy father and been slaughtered. The same is true of the dead twins' vision. In order to escape the endless left turn and loop of abuse, Danny must change directions and exit to his right. The cross symbolism of the twins and the physical structure of the hotel itself is already present in their cross symbolism with doors and mirrors. But note also that the sky blue halls outside the Torrance apartment and the frilly flower pattern of these halls seems to match their dresses. The doors are also flesh coloured, which is interesting in that Jack chops his way through two of them, the second one filmed with Wendy in her blue robe from an angle that appears as if she is being hit by the axe and the walls of the Twin Hall are smeared with blood like the twins themselves. It's as if the hotel is alive. And paralleling this motif, many poster design sketches at the Kubrick archives show structural elements of the hotel designed to look like faces and hands. As if the dead twin scene wasn't multi-layered enough, Kubrick has also linked it to the River of Blood scene, which in itself has some impressive subliminals. One parallel is that as Danny first shined the Red River, a wall of blood splashed up and blacked out the screen. This is also true of the dead twin scene, except that it's Danny's hands which rise up and black out his vision. And ever. This is our Colorado Lounge. Oh, it's beautiful. My God. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Ullman. Goodbye, girls. 